Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Richard and I'm the Bull Rider. So I recently pulled the motor out of my Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera. I had an issue with oil pooling on top of the, uh, on top of the piston. And um, when, it, when I started up the car, it would all shoot out the back in a big cloud of James Bond smoke. This is gonna be the first look that anyone has ever seen into this Superleggera motor, this Lamborghini Evenfire V10 in about 15 years. So it's gonna be pretty exciting to see what's in here. And we're gonna talk about a couple things. We're going to pull the cylinder heads off and we're gonna look inside the cylinders and see what kind of scoring we have. And then we're gonna pull the cylinder heads off and pull the valves out and take a look at really <laughs> how bad is it? Because I think you're gonna be uh, pleasantly surprised and um, there's, let's just say there's a lot of carbon. Let's just jump right into it and pull these cylinder heads off. So this is the valve cover gasket. I want you to guess how much this costs. I have a brand new one sitting upstairs, but I was thinking due to the cost of this, um, I might try and reuse this one. And if it doesn't work, I'll just throw the gasket that I have on already. Um, but guess, I'll tell you at the end of the video how much this costs, but I want you to guess and let me know what you think. There we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to put in the cam lock tool. And I already cranked the motor to TDC. Um, if you don't know what any of this is, um, don't worry about it. I'm gonna have another video where I go over um, everything in, in relation to the timing for this motor. In here, it looks pretty good though. You have two camshafts, um, both are VVT, so um, you can have a variable exhaust uh, camshaft and a variable intake camshaft. And then um, underneath, you have the valve springs. And then what we're trying to get to is the um, valve uh, seals underneath the valve springs. So we have to take this whole assembly off and uh, take the cylinder head off to do that. Next, we're gonna take off this timing cover. And I actually did the liberty of doing that and I just have them on held on with uh, some random fasteners. But um, it's just an array of uh, more T30 Torx. I think pretty much everything on this car is <laughs> T30 Torx. So get yourself a good T30 Torx if you're working on this car. So these are the two cam phasers. So you have two solenoids one right here for the intake cam and then one right here for the exhaust camshaft that um, control hydraulic pr or oil pressure that then um, tune this, this um, cam phaser to um, either advance the camshaft or retard the camshaft in terms of uh, timing in relation to the crank. So a pretty elegant system, uh, Audi parts. Looking in here you have the cap that I just took off. This is the inside of the motor, look at that. Stunning. This is what happens when you change the oil frequently and then compared to the outside. Isn't that crazy? It's just just absolutely wonderful. This this motor was definitely well taken care of. Just stunning. So inside here we have our first uh, timing chain tensioner. You can see the guide right here and then in here is a hydraulic uh, cylinder that um, when the motor is running it uh, there's oil pressure that feeds this uh, little piston right here. Ideally you should be able to compress this shoe to then have um, enough space to where you can put a pin through the shoe and then through that little hole right underneath. But I'm not able to do that. So I'm gonna actually remove the cam phasers and then take this um, uh, timing chain tensioner out uh, independently. So I have the crank lock pin in, so the crankshaft is locked. And then I also have the cam lock um, bar in that I showed you how I installed previously. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts. Um, I'm probably gonna do the exhaust and then the intake. And this is a 12 point triple star. There's the teeth on the, on the cam phaser for the chain. So once you take these bolts out, um, then the, the chain is pretty much loose from the camshafts. So we can start by just wiggling them out. And then once we get one of them out, the chain will be loose there just like that. Perfect. There we go. See the orifice holes for the uh, variable valve timing and how it advances it. You can see the spring that, that holds the camshaft in like a neutral state. And then once you provide oil pressure to it, it advances it um, in relation to the crankshaft. So very simple, elegant variable valve timing system. So yeah, just wiggle this past the chain and it should pop out. And the chain will drop down in there, it's okay. Right, so since everything's in time, you can see these little depressions on the camshafts right here, right here, right here, and so on and so forth. And that allows us to get our tool into the cylinder head bolts. See that? So look how elegant that is. 
Um, so that means we don't have to take the camshafts out to take the cylinder head out. So that's kind of nice design, nice engineering. And then uh, we're gonna need a special tool. I'll link this in the description. I think it's called a spline, something like that. Um, used on a lot of Audi cylinder heads. So I'm just in loosening up this last bolt. And then um, I don't think it's gonna move just as insurance. Yeah, pretty easy. Uh, just hold like this kind of generalized area. You can grab pretty much anywhere. <laughs> Good? Yeah, trade you. Oh, there it is. Okay. okay. So with the cylinder head off, we can get a really good look at what the cylinder wall scoring looks like. Um, if you're not familiar with this motor, uh, the 5.0 Lamborghini um, V10 was very susceptible to cylinder wall scoring due to the catalytic converters failing over time. And although the cylinder wall scoring does exist, like this is the worst line, um, I don't know if it's causing any sort of issues with compression. I run my finger over it and I can't really tell any sort of depression whatsoever. And someone brought up a good point when it comes to cylinder wall scoring and um, the compression test and how when I ran a compression test, it might have been where um, there was oil inside the piston or actually there was oil inside the cylinder and it was causing oil to uh, seal up these piston rings a lot better than they were before. And um, my counter argument to that is I ran this test, the compression test, uh, multiple times over multiple days and really wanted to let that oil um, from the, va the failed valve stem seals to leak into the, uh, the sump and um, give me a good cold dry compression test. And what I found when I did that cold dry compression test was that there wasn't any sort of variance whatsoever between the cylinder walls, or sorry, there wasn't any sort of variance whatsoever between the cylinders. Um, when it came to compression, I still got 150 PSI cold. Under ideal conditions, I should get about 151 to 152 PSI. So I think this doesn't really warrant a rebuild. I think it is, I think it is an issue on these motors. So I also believe that um, a lot of people experience like smoke when it comes to uh, deceleration and stuff like that. And then they take it to a mechanic and then they say, oh, well, because you have scored uh, cylinder uh, walls, um, this is where all the smoke is coming from and this is why your car is, is shot. Um, I, I honestly, I can't perceive any sort of um, divot or anything on here. I know, you know, ideally you'd want it, the cylinder to have a nice cross hatch, but I don't think it's, this is um, affecting compression as much as we'd like to think or we're led to believe, um, at least in my case. Eventually I'd like to rebuild this motor um, and get this sleeved, but the problem is I got a quote for sleeving, just sleeving the short block, completely stripped down, and um, they quoted me $35,000 to do it. So I am not gonna go with that guy, but you know, I need to find a reputable supplier for um, machining services for this 5.0 block, and then I probably will machine it. But we're just gonna do a, a valve job on this and then put it back together and it will run fine. But um, I don't know. I think it might be a misdiagnosis. I wanna hear your thoughts. I'm, I'm making this look very dramatic on the DSLR with a one-to-one uh, -one reproduction ratio um, uh, lens, but I, you know, when you look at it in person, it's really not that big of a deal. Let me know your thoughts though. I really wanna hear what you think about this. So in here, we just got a four valve per cylinder, uh, cylinder head. Um, pretty basic overall. Um, I'm gonna take these ports out and show you what's underneath. Um, just super dirty. It's been burning a lot of oil, so. Uh, I'm gonna just do a valve job on this. That's gonna be in the next video. And uh, I'll show you how to, how to do a really good valve job on this and uh, get these sealing nice and, nice and good. And I'll, <laughs> I'll show you the amount of carbon that's underneath these exhaust valves. You're, you're gonna be like, wow, that's a lot of horsepower lost. But um, let me take the cams out and then we'll take a look at the valves once I get the valves out. Now that we have the valves out, we can get a good look at how bad or good this really is. And overall, pretty good. Um, it's just a lot of oil contamination, especially in the exhaust valves, and it just packs on, and uh, in here it's just loaded with soot, so it's just, just absolutely insane. So if you look in here, it's just filled with, with soot, especially like that. Like, look at that. It's crazy. I bet you I'm going to gain about 50 horsepower once I clean all this junk out of here. And then same for the intake valves. Um, just loaded with oil. Um, due to the valve stem steel failure. You can see like that, especially, you know. Um, look at this one. This one's like, this one looks like it's been polished by oil. Uh, it's a good time. 
overall, these, these uh, cylinder heads are very nice. You can see the cut valve guides right there. Um, pretty free flowing, pretty nice for a stock head. Um, I know a lot of turbo guys run that, like, look at that. Let's, let's just, you know, really nice attention to detail, good casting, uh, good surface finish. Um, it just needs a little bit of a rework. Just gonna do an old school valve job on this. As for the valves, we're gonna clean the valves and then we're gonna reseat them. Um, and, and we're gonna call it good. I mean, I'm probably gonna pick up a lot of horsepower with this. Like you can imagine, look how much, look how much carbon is built up on there. And then the last but not least, I'm going to show you what's underneath this timing cover. Um, nice. Got it? You're free. Oh yeah, that's simple. Can't you tell? So now that we have that cover off, we can get a good look at what's underneath here. So these two chains, this one's for the, uh, the cylinder head. And then, wait, all right, all right, there it is. And then here's the other chain for the cylinder head. And then these have their own respective tensioner that I showed you how to, uh, how to remove. And so right here, what you see, this is for the accessory drive. This powers your power steering pump through a gear mechanism located in this area. And then um, like it powers your power steering pump, your AC compressor, your, uh, what am I missing? What am I missing? Water pump and oil pump, right? So this is that, the chain for this. And timing on this doesn't matter, okay? The only timing that we have, really have to worry about is with regards to this main chain in relation to the two chains that we just took off. If you don't change your oil, this is gonna fail. This fails on a lot of the uh, B6S4s that I commonly reference in regards to uh, having common parts for this. And um, so if you have a pre-LP Gyarado, you're gonna have a plastic guide shoe right here. But if you have a um, LP Gyarado, or an R8 4.2 or an R8 5.2, you're gonna have a metal guide shoe with a uh, plastic cover over the top, and that's a lot stronger. We're gonna re be replacing this plastic guide shoe with a metal guide shoe, because this part right here, this one I'm pointing at, always fails. So if you don't change your oil very frequently, you know, most Gyarado owners do, because you know, it's a supercar. If you don't change it frequently, this will fail, right? Um, you have this guide shoe that sometimes fails as well. Um, I'm going to do a full in-depth timing chain video on how to replace all these chains and then finally how to time the cylinder heads to the crankshaft, um, no sweat. So it's pretty easy overall, um, just it looks just very complicated, but we're going to simplify it and make it a lot easier for you and uh, get you down the road. So the last question is, how much do these valve cover gaskets cost? I'm holding a uh, brand new one in my hand. I have two of these. Um, you're gonna need two for your motor. And these are about $400 each. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. So you see a lot of them used on like eBay or um, like even bull stuff, like uh, reputable parts suppliers. So I thought maybe they're reusable. Um, they are a rubber gasket. And if they don't seal correctly, then we can just put the new ones on that I have um, in my garage already. and. Uh, call it a day but i thought it'd be a good experiment to try out um it's just insane how much these cost but you know you got to pay to play and that's why i have them so um if you like this video i really appreciate it if you give this video a like that way i know i'm, I'm giving you good videos and good content and uh until next time thanks